Filling those big blank spaces on walls can sometimes be one of the biggest decorating dilemmas. So today we're gonna to talk all about gallery walls and how to make them work for your home. So a while back, Kason and I decided that we wanted to tackle a gallery wall. And for a while we just thought, oh sweet, we'll just take some pictures, throw them up on a wall and be done. And then we started really doing it. And it took a lot more work than we thought it would and it was a lot more calculated than we thought it would have to be for the style that we wanted. Um, I think gallery walls can work really great in lots of spaces because everyone has these big blank walls that want to fill either if it's in a master bedroom, a hallway, a living room, wherever. So. I think one of the first things to do is just to decide where your gallery wall is going to be and how big the pictures and everything else are going to span. Yeah, and I think a lot of it too, to alleviate your gallery wall stress, really what you, you should really think about. Which is a real thing, people, so. It is. Yeah. Um, is what is your inspiration? Why, why are you doing it? Is it in your daughter's room? Is it in your son, son's right. room? Is it in a hallway? Um, is it a man cave? You know, anything like that. You're going to put a gallery wall in your man cave one day? I don't know if we'll, I don't know if I'll ever have a man cave, but. <laughs> That's so great that you even thought of that now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, so, so inspiration is, is a big deal before, before you even start uh, thinking about it. Right, so a lot of the times you can find inspiration obvious, in the obvious places like magazines and Pinterest is another great place. Um, for us, we um, had to look at a few pictures and decide what things we loved about specific gallery walls and what things we didn't like so much. So as you can see, gallery walls don't have to be just photos. I think a lot of the time they are. But in this um, image right here from Ballard Design, you can see that they've made a gallery wall with lots of different kinds of elements with the letters, a clock, these pin boards, and pictures. So for us in our gallery wall behind us, you can tell that we decided that we had to do a couple of things first. One, we had to decide what kind of frames we were gonna have. And we decided that we wanted all of our frames to be the same. With gallery walls, you don't have to have all the same kinds of frames, but for the look we wanted, more streamlined, a little bit more modern, we decided to go with all the same frames. Another thing that we had to decide was how expensive we wanted everything to be. We had a budget and we needed to stay under a certain budget. So um, before we decided what sizes and what things, we had to look around to make sure that we could find frames that we could actually afford. Yeah. So we ended up going with Ikea's frames, obviously, but you, there's so many different things you could do. Uh, you could thrift frames, uh, you know, there's so yeah. many different types of materials. You could have metal, you could have wood. And um, you can even thrift frames and paint them all the same yeah. to make them look cohesive. Another example, you money. Uh, if, if you don't want to use all the same frames, um, something like this where they have the white frame, wood, they have a little bit of a metal frame. So there's so many different things you can do. It doesn't have to be, um, one type of frame. So with any of the projects, really you need to make sure, big thing is know the space that you're buying for. Right. So make sure that you have the measurements before you go out to buy the frames. Otherwise you might end up with too little or too much. So right. yeah. Too much. I mean, you can always return, but it's kind of a pain. So again, um, so lay your frames out. You know, whenever, when we went to Ikea, we actually laid them out on the ground, not on a Saturday. And mm -hmm. we, you know, tried to see about where everything would fit. And I think we really only ended up with like one extra frame, which yep. was really nice because we decided to go a different route. So pre-planning, if you're doing something a little bit more structured, like our gallery wall is, I think, really key. Yeah. So, okay, the steps to doing a good gallery wall. I think the best thing that you can do is make paper templates for your frames. Um, having your frame is great and you know, Everyone wants to seat up on the wall right away and just start moving it around, but you can't keep moving the frame around because then you're gonna get holes in your wall and it's just no bueno. So one thing that we decided to do was to take just computer paper and you can use like craft paper, you know, the big rolls that come from Michael's or um, any other craft store, but we just had computer paper. So we actually taped two pieces together for this specific frame, lay it on top, traced around it with a pencil and then cut it out. So what we were ended up with were just a whole bunch of paper templates that were exact sizes of our frames, which were like 10 million times easier to move around. And let's be honest, how many times do we move them around? 3,529? Three yeah. yeah. Three hours so of moving templates. So it really saved us so much time. And we just used painter's tape 
um, half on the paper, you know, and half on the wall so it didn't ruin the paint or anything. And then once we had everything where we wanted it, we actually took a nail and just put it into the paper template, then hung the picture and just kind of ripped the template down so we'd make sure everything was pretty much where it was gonna be until we needed to level it. Yeah, and definitely a, another big call out with any type of gallery wall or in decorating in general is personalize it for your space. For sure. And, uh, you know, that's kind of where Shelly spends her time dabbling is in the Expertise. design <laughs> the, the design aspect. So, yeah. Um, um, yeah. We, we knew that we wanted to bring a lot of color into the space. And I think with a gallery wall with photos, it's a really easy way to take risks because pictures are interchangeable and you don't have to have them forever. So instead of painting your wall yellow, why not go and take pictures in front of a really fun yellow wall so that that way you're not stuck with yellow forever. You know, you can just take those photos down and put photos back up that maybe are different when you change seasons or you change your decorating style throughout the years. Also, that being said with the photography in gallery walls, I think it's really important to have some sort of plan, especially if you're doing something a little bit more um, specific like we did. We decided when we went into our photography session with our photographer Lacey that we wanted really specific photos for the type of gallery wall that we had. So we weren't um, like annoyingly picky, but we said, you know, we have some frames that are a little bit of an awkward size and we were hoping that you could get a, a shot like this or like that. And we had different, I guess, ideas of what we wanted so that when we came back from the photo session, we weren't disappointed with the, the, the pictures right. we got, right? Yeah. And I think it takes a little bit of planning, but I mean, it's a huge piece of wall art for really pretty inexpensive because the pictures aren't that much money. No, in fact, you, all of these prints, that, that we have up there, we actually ordered online from an online printer mm -hmm. and we spent under $50 for all of the prints. So oftentimes you think of giant pictures as being very expensive, yeah. but they don't have to be. In fact, you can get uh, large prints from Costco or Sam's Club for under $5, you can get a 16 by 20. So uh, it doesn't have to be expensive. And I think ultimately after all the planning and everything, the goal is to not have your wall look like for me, I, I imagine my great grandparents' home behind their couch. They had like four decades worth of family photos, and it's just awful, right? Random so, frames, old people, new so people. It just I think with mix. as long as you plan ahead and, and get it done right the first time, it'll look really well. Um, it can look simple, but it, it can be a little bit difficult to put together up front. Right, and I do think that some people like to just start throwing stuff up on the wall and have it look just however it turns out. And that's great too, but you wanna make sure that it pretty much just fits you. And I think the great thing about gallery walls is that you can do so many different kinds of things to express your own personality. And I have to say that one of the biggest trials with gallery walls is making sure that everything's really level. So our handy dad tip today is going to be all about different levels and how to use them to make your next gallery wall perfect. Hi DIYers. It's Paul, also known as Handy Dad, and it's TNT time, tips and tools. Do you remember when you were a kid, the nursery rhyme, I knew a crooked man who walked a crooked mile? Well, there's nothing worse in a do-it-yourself project than having something that's supposed to be straight be crooked. I'd like to talk today about levels. This is probably the most common kind of level. It's a carpenter's level and it works with little bubbles and water, and I'm gonna show you how that works in just a second. There are also lots of other kinds of levels. This level here is for leveling a post when you put it in the ground. This level here is a string level, and you could suspend a string from two points, hang this on the string, and it will tell you whether that string is level or not, and you can raise and lower this one end of the string until it's level. Now we're going high tech. This is a laser level, and this is a sweet tool. Uh, if you ever get one of these, can get your hands on one of these, this is awesome too. But I'm going to talk about the most common and easiest to use, the carpenter's level. Now obviously, this picture is not straight, and we would want it to be straight, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to place this level against the wall, and we're going to hold the bottom stationary and we're going to move the top until this bubble that's in this glass tube is centered between these two lines and then we'll move the picture to be parallel with it so I'm going to tip the picture up a little bit 
And then I'm going to take this over and put it close to the side of here. And now I'm going to move this back and forth until that bubble is centered between these two lines. The distance between the edge of the photo, top and bottom, should be the same. And so we can move it back and forth until it's perfectly straight. The same principle would work if you put the level now on the top of the frame, you would see that this bubble would be directly between those two lines telling you that the frame is not only straight this way but is also level horizontally. This is another perfect example of having the right tool for the right job makes any do-it-yourself project easy, fun, and you'll love the results.